What's going on guys? It's day two of the LA Fit Expo and Stephanie and I found our luggage. <laughs> I so, know, we're actually wearing what we're supposed to wear. So as it turns out, um, the luggage was there all along since yesterday morning. I'm just gonna roll a couple clips up here of us finding our luggage. How long have they been there? This morning? No, for yesterday. What time yesterday? I think the early one, you know? Early in the morning yesterday? Yeah. I no know way. Why didn't they call us? Yeah, there was no note in our room. So anyway, apparently our bags were here since yesterday. That's it, was, it was literally a fluke for me to even check. Yeah. It does seem so obvious in hindsight that we should have just like checked the front desk, but they told us that they would they give us a call and you would have thought that the hotel would have like notified us or left us a note or something. So like we never literally just like didn't think to do that until now. And uh, well, at least we got our stuff. That's, that's the main thing. So yeah, we're really happy that we got it. Um, we're going back for another four hours I'm meeting you guys today, which I'm really excited for. And tonight we're gonna go for a workout at Gold's Gym, the mecca of bodybuilding. Right now we're waiting on our Uber to get here, take us to Convention Center. All right. Um, so guys, we're on the way to the expo right now. And um, I figured something I'd cover just quickly on the way, just to make this video a little bit more informative, was I was actually reading a new study. A few people sent it my way yesterday. Um, so I had a quick read through it this morning while I was waiting. It was really interesting because it's sort of like, it doesn't really refute EMG as a methodology, but it sort of, I guess, encourages us to have caution in terms of how we interpret data that uses EMG and then how we apply it. Um, so as many of you guys know, I've used EMG research a lot on this channel to justify certain exercises. And so there's this new study published by a good friend of mine, Andrew Vygotsky, who I've actually interviewed before on the channel, and I'm hoping to have him on again um, to talk about this in a little bit more detail. Um, but I think that the main two takeaways, at least for our practical purposes from this paper, were that one, he's encouraging people to use the term excitation rather than activation when referring to EMG amplitude. And the difference here is basically that Excitation refers to a neuromuscular process, whereas activation refers to basically how many motor units are firing, roughly speaking. So those are not necessarily synonymous, so that's something that I'm gonna use moving forward. When I talk about EMG research, I'm gonna talk about excitation of the muscle rather than activation. Um, but even more practical for hypertrophy purposes, I think, is that we need to be wary of how we're applying this excitation data to long-term hypertrophy. Um, because according to this paper, the evidence isn't really there to show a necessarily strongly correlated link between EMG amplitude and hypertrophy over the long term. And basically, I think from my perspective, and a lot of people who have used this as a proxy for hypertrophy, because it's a lot easier to stick some electrodes on people and measure EMG amplitude than it is to conduct a study over 12 weeks and measure hypertrophy that way. Um, so it does have its purpose in the research and it's very abundant, abundant as a methodology. And I think that the theory basically goes that if you have greater excitation, that's gonna result in greater activation, which will mean greater motor unit recruitment, then greater muscle protein synthesis, and greater hypertrophy. Now, in this paper, they basically take the line that that last link in that chain is the one that they kind of have an issue with. That's the one that they try to refute. And they cite one paper from 2014, um, which I remember reading when it came out, which I think it was titled something like, Myofibrillar Protein Synthesis Doesn't Correlate With Long-Term uh, Hypertrophic Adaptations or something like that. And this study does in fact find that um, in the six hours after a resistance training session, muscle protein synthesis doesn't correlate with hypertrophy um, over like a 12 week training program or what have you. But I think that muscle protein synthesis almost obviously has to correlate with hypertrophy in some sense because net protein balance is simply a function of rates of muscle protein synthesis minus rates of muscle protein breakdown. So for max hypertrophy, you want synthesis to be high and breakdown to be low. Um, so it would be interesting to talk to Andrew a little bit more about this and the researchers on that paper do make the case that there's indirect evidence to suggest that protein synthesis and hypertrophy are linked, such as if you look at studies that um, looked at feeding milk protein versus soy protein, you tend to see higher rates of muscle protein synthesis with the milk protein, and then you also tend to see more hypertrophy with the milk protein. It's not in the same study, but combining them together, it does seem to indicate that there, there is a link there. Um, so I think that there is still a pretty decent theoretical basis for um, using EMG research as sort of a stand-in for hypertrophy. And another another interesting thing I actually just remembered was that they referenced some uh, research on stretching, which shows that even in the absence of activation, you can still see significant hypertrophy just from stretching alone. Um, so it isn't the case that activation will more activation necessarily leads to more hypertrophy, but I think that 
all else being equal, um, if you assume the stretch is equal, you assume the load is equal, and all the rest is equal, I think that more excitation should mean more activation, which then should mean more hypertrophy over the long term. That's my current opinion on it. It's really rough thoughts because I just like <laughs> read the paper this morning. But if you guys would like to hear me do a full-blown interview uh, with one of the researchers, I think the lead researcher actually on this paper on the channel, just let me know. And uh, this is something I I'd love to cover in more detail. So anyway, uh, we're gonna finish out this Uber ride, get to the expo, and I'll check in with you guys over there. So that's a real fitness influencer there. <laughs> <laughs> sushi or maybe some like Korean food or something I forget anyway I'm gonna check in with you guys at the restaurant just want to quickly say everyone who came out today thank you so much I was like completely blown away by the turnout here I was here last year it was nice I met some people but this time there was literally no breaks in the line four hours straight we had like a full lineup around the booth the whole time it was just absolutely amazing and like humbling for me to know that that many people were interested to come out and yeah, I, I just want to thank all you guys so much, and I'll check with you guys at the restaurant. Time for some sushi. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna dump some sushi. You ready to see me eat, babe? People, you talk big. people at the expo were grilling me for not being able to eat as well as her. We're gonna learn tonight. Oh, we gotta learn today. We gotta learn. <laughs> learn today. We'll see. We'll see. I want a California uh, spicy tuna for sure. And salmon roll. Also, like I've talked to like so many people who are subscribers, and you guys have totally convinced me to bring the podcast back. And I am going to change the name. I've decided on that. So it's currently called Ice Cream for PRs. I'm going to change it to the Jeff Nippard Podcast because that's just how most people know me now. Um, and I think that it'll be more searchable and discoverable that way. Um, so I'm going to do that, and it, it's seriously going to come back strong. I'm doing the first episode of like the revival with Kamal uh, Patel of Examine.com. We're going to talk about the vegan diet. And it's going to be very in-depth, very evidence-based, very unbiased, or as unbiased as we can make it. Um, and I think you guys are really going to like it. So I'm going to double post them on iTunes, Stitcher, and then also on this main channel. Um, so you can stay tuned for that. Podcast is coming back. Okay, so here's what we got. This is called a hot night roll. It's like spicy tuna with uh, shrimp tempura and I think some scallop in there as well. This looks really good. I'm excited to try that. And then I got a California roll and a spicy tuna roll. So we're gonna dig in. This is our pre-workout meal. I have a feeling I'm gonna be really sleepy after this. Um, so I might slam some caffeine and then we're gonna kill a workout at close. Just finished up with the sushi. Um, I actually like cut myself a little bit short. He, th he, on thinks, that. he thinks he can no, eat. No, no, no. I, I ate a decent amount of sushi, but like at, at the same time, like I'll start to crash if I eat too many carbs, especially too late, like after a long day like that. So I feel nice and full. Um, we're gonna get an Uber, allow that to digest a little bit. We we'll go up to the Mecca, you know, Gold's Gym, and get in a back workout there. So I'll check in with you guys when we get over there. Hey, uh, hold up, man. I, I got something to say, man. What? Girl, let's get out of die. Sick of living life, sick of count scars. We the ones who go to war. Right in the dark, take your life back, take your time, nigga. Welcome to the tribe, check your heart. I was doing bad, couldn't find niggas. Now my phone ringing all the time, nigga. We the Michael Jordan with the Scotty. Apollo Green with the Rocky. We gon' take it fast, you can take it slow. We don't take no breaks, we just take control.
That's a wrap. I think I think this was honestly my favorite expo to date. I, I had such a blast here this weekend. It was so good. I have to give a shout out to Rashawn for being behind the camera the whole weekend. For making our life so easy, okay? I, I'm so excited to see the edit on this. This is the first time I haven't like been in like creative control of my own content. So I, like I'm really excited. If you guys like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you um, like the edit, give it a thumbs up. Please. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.